the Nine. sun was number 226. I mean, they kill them so fast you can't even solve a case. Don't be afraid to step up and speak up. This is my son, Darian Griffin, age 33. Made it December the 8th. 2003. If everybody still keep the same mentality, how is it going to end? I mean, innocent people are losing their lives. How is it going to end? This loss was devastating to my parents and my sister and myself. I had to bury my mother and my son together because of a senseless act. We didn't just want another rally. We wanted to feel our pain. I got the phone call from my stepson. Um, crying and screaming and hollering and telling me to come quick that Kelly had been shot. Dorothy Johnson Spite is an anti-violence advocate in Philadelphia. My son, Kalik, 24 years old, was shot seven times over a parking space right here. Right here on December 6, 2001. Kalik was a great guy. He never got in trouble, never gave me any trouble in the neighborhood. Even growing up, I don't even remember him getting into fights or anything like that. He was just really a great guy. The mothers in charge, make some room and let them up. Let them up. They have each lost a son, a child. Applaud them, y'all. Give me your love. They have all lost someone. They've all lost a son. They've all lost a child. Bring them up and give them some love, men. Welcome in May of 2003, when Mothers in Charge first started, um, we thought we would work with repeat violent offenders. As other mothers came, there were different things that mothers wanted to do. Some mothers wanted to work with children in the schools. Uh, we realized that children are younger and angrier now, and, and a lot of them had issues around resolving their conflict through fighting, and we wanted to make a difference with them very early on in hopes that they would not be um, someone who would pick up a gun later on when they're 15 or 16 years old. So we started programs in the schools working with children. Uh, we also started working with parents, realizing that oftentimes young parents um, who are dealing with young teenagers have difficulties. So we wanted to be able to encourage them and support them and mentor them. I think mother in charge and my granddaughter kept me sane. Uh, focus on, on this child that's not going to have a mother. Thinking of her need helped me get up and do the things I had to do. Um, keep on living, keep on striving each day. We talk to young people about the impact of violence, oftentimes by telling our stories of the pain that we live with and the anguish that we live every day because someone has made a bad decision, a bad choice to pick up a gun and take another's life. So that's what we do and we hope to reach people by sharing our personal stories. And I thank God for Dorothy and the members of Mothers in Charge because they have been the force that have keeping me going. I mean, without her and the other members of Mothers in Charge, I do believe that I would probably be a basket case by now. We also collaborated with organizations that are working for safer gun laws in Pennsylvania, realizing that there's so many guns, so many illegal guns in our community, and that we have to work to, to change that. We have to get stronger gun laws in Pennsylvania. We have to start teaching the children because right now they're raising themselves. And if I can reach just one child to let them know what I went through with Jermaine's death, if I make one difference, then I'll be at peace with that. We realize there's a thin line oftentimes between the mothers who are losing children as well as the mothers whose children have made bad choices and bad decisions. So we realize that we gotta come together, all of us, to make a difference, to save our babies, to save our young men and saved the lives of so many others. So that's what we do. This is the criminal history record of that young man who killed my son. It's 11 pages long. It started at the age of 16 years old when he first entered the, the justice system with simple assault. And it went on till he was 26 years old when he murdered my son, December 6th. But before that, July 15th, he murdered Justin Donnelly. He took two lives. Why? Because there was no one in his life to provide him direction. Mothers in Charge, as I stated earlier, started with just three mothers, uh, three mothers who had lost their sons to violence. And today, uh, four and a half years later, there are over 400 members and supporters in Philadelphia. 
under the Philadelphia chapter of Mothers in Charge. And we've also started chapters in other areas. We have a chapter in Chester, Delaware County, Norristown, Montgomery County, Atlantic City, New Jersey, and just recently we started a chapter in Brooklyn, New York. So we plan to take this national because it's not just a Philadelphia problem. We're losing our young people across this country to violence. So my husband died September 05 of a broken heart. You can't mm. tell me anything else. Mm. It was a broken heart that took him out mm. of here. He could not get over the fact mm. that somebody killed his daughter and his grandson. And I have been fortunate to work with Mothers in Charge in that I'm around a group of women that understand exactly how it feels to lose a child. My husband, I don't think, has fully acknowledged that his son is gone. And so he has not joined a support group. Um, but often you'll hear the phrase, you know, that's an angry black man. My husband is an angry black man because our son's killer is still out on the street. And we hope that you seeing this group of women holding the very last picture that many of us will ever have of our children will make a statement. I don't know what more it's going to take to make a change in this city. You know, violence is not like some incurable disease. It's not like cancer where there's no cure or any type of, you know, disease like that. It's a conscious decision that people make to pick up a gun and take someone's life. So we've got to find a way to address that. Um, it is, while it's not an incurable disease, it is a public health issue because it is the leading cause of death among African American males, 14 to 24. Not heart disease, not cancer, but homicide. That is what, that is, what is killing African American males across this country. The number one killer is homicide. I never understood after Dot lost her son, how she could get up every morning and do mothers in charge and have such a, a passion to, to help somebody else after she had went through this. I just, it was just hard for me to get it. And it's still hard for me to get it. But I see all these people and I see all the help that they want to give people and, and, and I don't know. The love they have for people, it, it makes you want to do something. It makes you want to help somebody so that they won't have the hurt that you had. We need funding for many different things. Right now, many of the mothers are volunteering. Many of the mothers work um, for mothers in charge outside of their job or after their job or on the weekends or in the evenings. But they would be willing to leave their job and do this full time. I mean, that's, that's the kind of passion they have about this work. They know that they don't want their children's lives to have been lost in vain. So they're willing to make a difference. They're willing to stand up and be a part of change. So a lot of them would leave their jobs today if they could, get a, if they could generate a salary through Mothers in Charge. And we have many talented women in this organization. We have educators, we have social workers, we have people with many different gifts clerical, social, secretarial. You know, right now, we just have mostly volunteers. And that's really not a way to run an organization. We need to um, treat it as a legitimate nonprofit organization, which it is. So we need funding. We need an operating budget. We need someone to um, be the executive director, like myself, who would get, generate a salary. We need administrative assistance. We need secretary. We need people to, you know, be in the community doing the different programs that we do. We need a grant writer. We need, we need many different kinds of things like that. So our operating budget would help us to be able to, to hire the people that we need to run the organization like we need to run it. And it's not just a black crime. It's an everybody crime. All colors do it. But we're talking about our black children. And I'm a black woman. And I'm here as Patti LaBelle, the entertainer, to hopefully get somebody's attention. Uh, if you don't look at the news and see it yourself to say, I'm going to do something myself without being encouraged by Patti LaBelle, that's kind of sad. We have to start embracing our kids 
and letting them know that there's somebody special. You see, it doesn't matter whether you're black, whether you're white. It doesn't matter about race, creed, or color, religion. We need you. No matter where you live, whether you live in the city, whether you live in the suburbs, we need you. No one is safe until we're all safe. We must all work together to make a difference.